Alright, today we're going to be talking about using the triangle inequality theorem and classifying triangles by their side lengths. Now, what we're going to do to start with is we're going to first take a look at the triangle inequality theorem. And this is a theorem which just states the following. The sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle are greater than the length of the third side. So when I take a look at this, uh, I just kind of look at it in a couple of steps. First thing, add the two smallest sides. And then what I have to do is take a look at their sum, and their sum's got to be greater than the length of the largest side. So what I like to do is ch just take it and kind of classify things like this. The small side plus the medium side, that's got to be bigger than the large side. If that's true, then I've got lengths of a side that are big enough to make a triangle but if that's not true then I've got no triangle and I don't have to worry about trying to classify it as right acute or obtuse so that's the first thing that I want to do now what I'm going to use next though to work with triangles is a, an offshoot of the Pythagorean theorem so we're going to take a look at this piece given three sides of a triangle with C being the side with the longest length we can use the following three theorems to classify the triangle so that's assuming we've already gone through the triangle inequality and we know we've got three lengths that will work to form a triangle. Then we take a look at this part. So what I do first is if I do c squared and I figure out that that's equal to a squared plus b squared, that means we've got a right triangle. However, if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then that means I'm going to have an acute triangle. And if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then that means the triangle is going to be an obtuse triangle. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to kind of help me fig determine what type of triangle I've got. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Now, first thing I want to do is take a look over here at example four or example one. I've got these two sides right here as my smallest and medium size. So 4 plus 5, is that greater than 10? No way. That's actually less than 10. And I want that to be greater than 10. So for this, no triangle exists. I can't have a triangle with lengths of 4, 5, and 10. Over here, for example, 2, I've got side lengths of 7, 8, and 15. So 7 and 8 are my smallest sides. Now here's a real tempting piece. Uh, sometimes when when people look at this they make the mistake and they're like oh 7 plus 8 well yeah 15 equals 15 so I would have some type of triangle but the triangle inequality specifically states that the sum of the two smallest sides has to be greater than and this is equal to the third side so again I have no triangle with those side lengths now for 8, 20, and 4, sometimes textbooks will do this. I don't know why, but they do. They put the largest side somewhere else, so sometimes you just have to watch for that. So 20 is our largest side, so we've got to add up 8 plus 4. Well, that's 12, and that's certainly not larger than 20. So since that's less than 20, again, we've got no triangle. So that's the first thing we always want to do when we're given three side lengths for a triangle is determine first if we have a triangle and if we don't we're done we don't have to determine if it's right acute or obtuse because the answer would be no triangle now here's going to be some other examples where we'll take a look at and we'll have to figure out which type of triangle we would have so let's take a look first here at this triangle four plus five is nine so if i add those two up yeah that's going to be greater than um or that's my small medium side that's going to be less than eight so or greater than 8 so that's going to uh, be true so far so if that parts true then I can go ahead and use the triangle or the Pythagorean theorem to kind of figure out what's going on here so I'll take C squared and I'm gonna wait and compare that to the 4 squared plus 5 squared now 8 squared is 64 and then I've got 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25 16 and 25 gives me 41 and 41 when I compare that to 64 64 is greater than 41 so since c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared then I'm going to have an obtuse triangle now for example 5 I've got sides of length 7 8 and 10 now it's obvious that 7 plus 8 is 15 and that's definitely the sum of that 7 plus 8 yeah that's greater than than 10 so I am gonna have a triangle here now I'm gonna figure out what type so 10 squared I have got to take that and figure out the sum of 7 squared plus 8 squared and 10 squared is 100 and 7 squared is 49 and then 8 squared is 64 
So I've got 100 and then 49 and 64. One quick way to estimate this is 50 plus 60 is, or actually you could do 40 plus 60, that's 100. And then 9 and 4 is 13, so this would end up giving you 113. Now 100 is less than 113. So since 10 squared is less than 7 squared plus 8 squared, our triangle in this case would be acute. So there's two examples for uh, that give you an obtuse triangle and uh, another one that gives you an acute triangle. Now I want to take a look at one other example here, example number 6. And for this one we've got sides 5 and 12. If I add those up, that's definitely, you know, 5 plus 12 is greater than 13. Um, so that means we are going to have a triangle. So let's get after trying to find it. So what type of triangle? So we would have 13 squared. And then I've got 5 squared plus 12 squared. 13 squared is 169 and 5 squared is 25 and 12 squared is 144. If I add 25 and 144 I get 169 and that's equal to 169. So since I've got 169 169 so what that's going to tell me here is that since 13 squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared the triangle is going to be a right triangle. So when deciding segment lengths that form a triangle, remember the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and figure out whether the segment lengths can form a triangle by the small and medium sides. They've got to be bigger than the largest side. That sum has to be the bigger than the largest side. And then we can use c squared and then compare that to the sum of a squared and b squared to determine what type of triangle we would have. All right, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.